Hey everyone, today we're talking about a conversion of images between the different color spectrums. We'll cover the grayscale images, color images, and hue saturation value images, or HSV. We start off by just loading in our image and performing a rotation on it. And here we have a raw image of a bridge. Grayscaling, these images are super easy. You simply take the image, run it through this function, RGB to gray, and then go ahead and you can plot this image. And you'll see now that we have a perfect grayscale image, which shows the brightness of the pixel values. For doing color images, I'm going to comment this out. We need to acknowledge that our photo has three color channels. Here we see it's 640 by 480 pixels, which is an array, but a image is a 3D array, hence by three at the end here, representing the red, green, and blue RGB color channels. When we do a color image, we can extract those channels and do some fun editing. But first, we have to split our image into the RGB channels. And we're going to go from this X by Y pixels by the three dimensions into three individual matrices that are just X by Y by one. To do this, MATLAB has a function called IM split. We can go ahead and run that function. And then we have to provide these multiple outputs of the red channel, green channel, and blue channel. And I'm simply putting the raw color image through this. When we run this, if we look in our workspace, we end up with an R, a G, and a B, all just X by Y number of pixels, and these are all one dimensional. When you take a look in here, you can now see the contributions of the color channels. A high value means that there's a lot of this individual color being contributed to the picture. And if we scroll down here, there's some lower values in the 40s, and these are lower contributions. Because of the data type being a uint8, these values go from 0 to 256. 0 being dark with no contribution, and then 256 being the brightest with the maximum contribution. The other way to split these channels, which is my preference just because I like dealing with matrices, is to use this notation here. This function does the exact same thing as this. We're simply using matrix indices to say we want all the rows, all the columns, but the first dimension, and that's red. All the rows, all the columns of the second dimension, which is green, and the third dimension for blue. We can then go and plot each of these color spectrums. And here we have a graph of the red, green, and blue pixels. Of course, these are only going to be in black and white because they're simply a 1D array here. It's just the number of pixels and then that value from 0 to 256, so we can only show this in grayscale. But if you look at the blue, you can tell, well, the sky is going to be the bluest portion, so hence this is the brightest value close to 256 here. But yet there's less contribution of the blue to the green grass and to the hills. Things that are white across all the images would be items that appear fully white in the raw image. In our raw image, the water is white, which means the presence of all light. Hence, we see each of these contributing to the water. The darkest spots of the raw image are seen kind of in these land masses and the hills on the side, and also the part of the rocks by the waterfall. If we look across all three images, we'll see there's minimal contribution from each of those here and on the sides where the land is. You can recreate the image with these RGB channels by using the cat function. You tell it that you want to combine three channels, the names of those three channels are G and B that we created earlier, and then we can simply show the recreated photo. I'm adding pauses in here just to ensure that it has time to render the figure and then add the title afterwards. 
If we do this, we'll see our recreated image is the exact same as the original raw image. Because of this, we can reconstruct this photo after we edit some pixel values, and we can create custom images now. If we want to knock out an entire color, we can do so. We already have G established here. I can call out that I want G, all the rows, all the columns to be zero. And we're essentially going to lose the entire G color. I'm going to comment these figures out because we don't need them. If we go ahead and plot this, here now is our recreated image without any greens. This is only blues and reds. Similarly, we can knock out the blue channel and it looks pretty yellow, simply a combination of greens and reds. And then we can knock out the red channel. And here we see it's mostly blues and greens. This one actually looks closest to the original image, which makes sense because there's nothing that's glaringly red in the image, whereas we have a lot of blues and a lot of greens. That covers our color images and modifying those. The last thing we can look at is the hue saturation value space. It's extremely similar to how we work with the color images in that we have the three spectrums and we're going to convert these into hue, saturation, and value. The most important step is that you have to call out the RGB to HSV on this raw image. And then you can go ahead and use that IM split command again, and it'll slice each of the dimensions of our 2D arrays into hue, saturation, and value. You can also use the other method I showed you of grabbing the first dimension, second dimension, and third dimension there. And you'll end up with those hues, saturations, and values. And from there, you can do similar plots like I showed you right here. You can also, of course, recreate images in the similar manner as I showed above. That's all for exploring the grayscale, HSV, and color scales of images. Hope you enjoyed this video, and check out the rest of the series on image processing. Cheers and have a great day.